How the Megalomaniacal Objectivist Tycoon Stole Christmas by Theodore S. Giesel and Izguchi All the splicers in Rapture liked Christmas a lot. Andrew Ryan, who ruled over Rapture, did not. This guy hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been his health bar was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his shoes or his health, he just couldn't bear parasites sharing their wealth. And he snarled through his teeth by the ghost of Ayn Rand. On the morrow, they'll do things that I just can't stand! And to point out my error before all of you, I'm aware Ayn Rand lived till 1982. For these mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers, they're obsessed with this concept of giving to others. And they give and they give and they give and they give! Without personal gain, there's no reason to live! The great chain can't keep moving if nobody's there to keep pulling, ignoring my dear laissez-faire. I must strive to suppress these collectivist thoughts. So he started to scheme an objectivist plot. I know just what to do, Ryan laughed in his throat, and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked, what a great sneaky trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer, and he looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there were none to be found. You especially can't find them under the ocean. So he summoned his good actor friend, Sander Cohen. Ryan knew that this artist could get quite contentious, so he made sure his query was truly pretentious. Sander Cohen, the rule of your life starts right here. An interpretive piece. You'll portray a reindeer. Sander dwelled on the query and pondered aloud. Even Laurence Olivier himself would be proud. It's a role needing focus, both inner and outer. This is just the portrayal to show those f***ing doubters. Sander promptly and gladly accepted the part. He just couldn't pass up some pretentious-ass art. They departed thereafter with satchels in hand, to Olympus Heights just like fake Santa had planned. And he walked to the first door, room 233, and he opened it with his covert master key. Then he laughed when he realized where he'd begun, and he chuckled, Oh, Tannenbaum, this will be fun. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant, all around the whole room, and he stole every present. He took shotguns and diaries, plasmids and flasks. He took wrenches, explodable barrels, and masks. And then he heard a voice, What you doing there, mister? Upon turning his head, he saw one little sister. And he knew that his actions must look awfully vile. So he chuckled and brandished his white Steinman smile. And he said, My dear, I'm confiscating these presents. Giving won't make a billionaire out of a peasant. For to gain you must take, just like great Alexander. And this Christmas is just communist propaganda. Not convinced, little sister said, That sounds like trouble. Please come teach him what Christmas means now, Mr. Bubbles. Then appeared a big daddy with hat on his head. And with eloquent articulation he said, And what happened then? Well, in Rapture, they say, Andrew Ryan's health bar was upgraded that day. You'd think that would compel his sour viewpoint to shift. Even still, he continued to pillage the gifts. And he said in a tone that would give you a chill, I won't compromise now. Never have, never will. But just then, an assassin crashed through the door blindly, with orders to murder that guy, would you kindly? Briefly stunned, Ryan quickly snapped out of his daze, and he yelled, A man chooses! A slave! He obeys! Then a golf club was driven right into his head. And so Christmas was saved. Andrew Ryan was dead. <laughs>